Father, as we come to you this morning, and we just ask you to bless our time together. Help us to understand what has taken place. Father, our, our finite minds just sometimes just can't grasp what has really taken place. Father, you sent your son to die in our stead. How, how can we ever thank you? Father, as we as we talk about opening and taking the scroll from the Father's hand. Bless our time. Give me the words to convey to your people what is taking place. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Let's keep in mind, as we uh, mentioned before, let's keep in mind that what you're reading here is from heaven's point of view, okay? This is all taking place in heaven. Hasn't taken place yet, but it will, okay? And let's talk a little bit uh, before we get into some things, a little, little bit of background here. We find that the scroll that's being held in the Father's hand is complete. Nothing more can be added to it. The scroll basically is, is uh, represents the title deed, if you will. And this is why Jesus came and died to redeem the earth. This is the title deed that God is holding in his hand. Cross-reference there, you have uh, Psalm 2, verse 8. You have Hebrews 1, verse 2. Ladies, um, what do you remember about the uh, kinsman redeemer? He is our kinsman redeemer. He's to set us free. Uh, this is based on, on Levit Leviticus 24 or 23 through 46. Uh, specifically in the book of Ruth, we have the kinsman redeemer okay, being played out. Also in Jeremiah, 
32, verses 6 through 15, it talks about it as well. As Bodhi wrote, uh, read, we have the uh, three unique titles given to the Lord to describe who He is. One, you'll find okay, the Lion of the tribe of, tribe of Judah, which talks about His strength and bravery. And then you have the, the root of David, which talks about Israel's ideal king. And then we transfer, uh, the, these are, are uh, manifestations of, of who Jesus is. And then we go cross over to the spiritual realm, okay? He's the Lamb that was sacrificed. The Lamb is mentioned 28 times in the book of Revelation. Uh, just a few of them. Uh, we have Revelation 6, 16, uh, Revelation uh, 7, 14. Uh, later on in the book, you'll have Revelation uh, 19 and 7, which says the church is the bride of the Lamb. Okay. 21, verse 9, basically says the same thing. Okay. So what, what does all this really mean? Well, the chapter, we, we find here this, we're not going to reveal what's in the chapter right now. We're talking about the scroll, specifically. The seals will be broken in chapter 6 and, and, and so on and so forth. But we've got to remember. We've got to remember that we're talking an Old Testament type of mentality here. We're talking from the Jewish mindset. Okay? The seven sealed scroll contains the unfolding at the end of the age. And by the way, Okay, since it's fresh in everybody's mind and all that, it's not happening tomorrow. Okay, because my Bible tells me there's no man. Okay, nobody knows when it's going to happen. So everybody that's predicting it's going to happen tomorrow is wrong. Okay, you didn't hear it here first. Okay, if you if you read your scriptures, okay. How many times has this happened before in, in your lifetime? Several times. Okay. Sometimes in the 80s. Okay. Uh, first one, let's see, in the 90s was what, 94, and then it was 99, and we're still here. Okay. I will tell you this, though. Okay. God's still on the throne. He's the one that controls all of this. And when he tells the groom to come and get the bride, then things will start happening. Not until. So we've got that out of the way. So let's talk about a crisis. The crisis here, as you find, no one, it says who is worthy Open the book and the seals thereof. Nobody was found. Nobody was found. In heaven or on earth or under the earth. Why is that? Because of its nature. Okay? This particular scroll, this particular book, if you will, 
It contains the deed for earth's redemption. Who can open that? No one. No one. Except except God made provision. God made provision. When an Israelite lost his land, sometimes it, sometimes it fall of his own. Sometimes it was he got you know in over his head and had to pay and. There's a provision there. Leviticus 25, 25 says his nearest relative is to come and to, to redeem and, and make restitution, pay the bill, whatever it was. Lost land could always be redeemed by a what? What's that term again? Kinsman redeemer, right? Provisions were usually written down and sealed in a book or a scroll in this case. It could only be opened by the kinsman redeemer. Um, it was a transaction that kept private so they didn't air everybody's dirty laundry. Okay. So this particular scroll is contains the provisions and the terms for the redemption of the earth. And the only one Worthy to open it is the kinsman redeemer because he has to pay. Now, notice what it says. It says here in verse 4, John's talking now. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll and to look inside. This is the only time tears are mentioned in heaven. The only time. But now we find, and we transfer it to the, to the conqueror Okay, we're talking about now the kinsman redeemer. Let's talk about him a little bit. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Do not weep. See, the lion from the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. Jesus is the only one worthy to open this home. No other person in the universe. Let, let that sink in. Let that sink in. He is the only one, the only person, and all of creation, past, present, future, the 
only one that is qualified to open that scroll. Christ is the conqueror. What did he conquer? He conquered death. He conquered hell. And in that, in that day, he's conquered Satan as well. He is the only one. He is the victor. John looks at this, at this conqueror, worthy to open the, the scroll. And instead of a, of a lion, he, he sees a lamb. Remember John the Baptist? What did he say when he, when he saw Jesus? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That sacrificial lamb is, is alive. And for all of eternity, he bears those scars, and we will see those scars. Okay? In his hands, in his feet, in the side. Now, I'm not so sure about this next part, okay? So this is kind of some supposition that we, uh, we picked up in some of the notes, but the lamb has seven horns, which may represent, okay, um, making reference, okay? To remember, get my mind here. It's making reference to the city of Jericho. Okay. How many times did the, people circle Jericho? Seven. Absolutely. Okay. This is kind of a stretch. I'm not really sold on it, so I'll, but I'm going to pass it on to you anyway. Okay? Because this, this is part of what, what we wrestle with in, in the book of Revelation. So they circled seven times, okay? And then the trumpet sounded, the walls came down. And making reference here, just as the, uh, thank you, making reference just as the walls of Jericho fell when the seven trumpets blew, okay, the wall um, that represents the inheritance or whatever, his promised inheritance, will come tumbling down as well. For me, that, that's kind of a stretch, okay? But let's just say the jury's out, okay? The lamb also has seven eyes. Um, which are the seven uh, spirits of God sent forth on the earth. But remember what it says in, in John 16, 8, talking about the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will convict the world of what? Of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. The Lamb comes forward, takes the book out of the right hand, of God. Who else who else dares to take anything from the right hand of God? 
Only Jesus the Son. There's no, one, there's no one else that even comes close to approaching the throne. Aren't you glad that he's our high priest? Aren't you glad that he's the one doing that? Now let's talk about a chorus. The Lamb took the, uh, takes the book, the four beasts and the twenty, and, and four elders, okay, fall down before him. There are harps, golden vials of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. These prayers, okay, have not been answered up until this point. What's the the traditional Lord's Prayer? Okay. It's not really the Lord's Prayer, it's just teaching us how to how to pray. But in, in Matthew 6 10 it says something like this. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is about to take place. This is about to take place. The four beasts, the 20, el 20 and four elders, now, thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. He alone is worthy. And then we have this, this heavenly chorus, if you will, that sings and says, thou wast slain, It has redeemed us. And, and, and notice, let's go here to verse 10. Verse 10 says, You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve and reign on the earth. Do you know? We'll talk about it when we get there. But do you know that during the millennium, you and I will be reigning? Not reigning, but reigning. Now John sees what? Verse 11. Then I looked, and I heard a voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousand times ten thousand. In the Greek, ten thousand was, was the highest number. So when he added all these thousands upon thousands upon thousands, okay, it was just, it's an infinite number. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders and a loud voice sang, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power Wealth, wisdom, 
strength, glory, honor, praise. In the Bible, the number seven represents completion. It, it, it's a done deal. When you, when you see seven in the Bible, okay, it's the number of completion. I'm going to ask you something. I've said it before, but what do you think that's going to sound like? Even at a, at a whisper, it's going to be deafening. But you're going to say, well, we'll be perfect. That, that's not going to bother us. I beg your pardon. I'll beg your pardon. Look. Noise is noise. Whether you're in a perfect state or not. Okay. It's going to be loud. And some of us complain that, okay, that some of our, our, our music is played too loud. I'm not one of them. Because I'm just deaf and I've just got to crank it up to hear it anyway. Okay. And if I like the song, I just crank it up even higher. And my lovely wife goes, turn that down. I well, I can't hear it. So I just play off that thing. It's going to be deafening. And they're going to say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So don't give me this thing that we keep repeating the same stuff all the time. Because you've got angels around the throne, that's their sole job to repeat over and over and over and over again. Same thing. What would be perfect? I'm, you're not this side of heaven? No, you're not. But guess what? You are. Redeemed, are you not? What's the point that I'm trying to make? Okay. Look, enjoy what heaven's going to be about. Don't don't have don't guard yourself. Will we be, we'll be perfect in heaven? Well, maybe. Yes, we're promised a, 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 a good body, a good body, okay, and, and, and all and all those things. Yes, absolutely. Now look who's included in this praise. Included in the praise is every creature which is in heaven. And on earth, and under the earth, and such as in the sea, all creation, every living being is going to join this chorus. Does that seem like it's going to be quiet to you? Every breathing creature joins in saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him who sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts say amen. And the 24 elders fall down and worship the Lamb. I 
I can't speak for anybody else. Even though I try sometimes. But when I see my Savior, you see these pictures of, uh, of grabbing him and hugging him and, and all that. I, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to be on my face before my Savior. I can't help it. That's where I belong. That's where I belong. In adoration and worship. And, and, and trying to utter those words. Okay? Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and wealth and, and wisdom and strength and, and honor and glory and praise. And how arrogant of me to think that I'd be able to stand beside him. All this praise is the result of the Lamb taking the scroll from the Father's right hand. This act indicates the final part of God's eternal plan for the redemption of all creation. And it's about to be accomplished. One day, okay, one day, sooner, sooner than we realize, okay, not tomorrow, but sooner than we realize, the seals will be broken. Then the kinsman redeemer, our kins kinsman redeemer, will redeem the earth and all of its creation. I'd like to close with, with Hebrews 10 and verse 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he Who promised is faithful. Not about us. It's all about him. And in that day, whatever it may be, in that day, you and I will be there. And joining. the heavenly host of saying worthy is the Lamb. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you once again for setting your son. Thank you, Father. That in that day, we can sing as well. Worthy is the Lamb. And to be able to look. To look upon His hands and His feet and His side. And for all eternity, as a testimony of what he has done for me, for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.